All right, so let's go ahead to the first step, and that's going to be number four in the assembly manual. And we can see here that we're going to need to connect the gantry to the base, which is quite simple. If we look right here, we got our bracket. And for this upper portion, you really just want to make sure that you're not tangled. So whatever direction you got to spin it to untangle these wires, once they look pretty good, the gantry will sit right here. And there's some threads in the channel that will line up. And you probably want to go ahead and get your bolts ready, which is on the next page, which is going to be the M416 that are going to go through the top here. And then the longer M545s through the bottom. So they're in these little baggies and they are labeled. And the larger ones, M545s. Let's grab an Allen wrench. So the largest one is going to go for the big bolts and smaller one for the smaller ones. And I hope you guys can see that. But yeah, we're just going to line it up here and run the bolts through. So yeah, this is a pretty simple process. So I'm just running these down because we haven't installed the ones on the bottom yet. And you don't want to tighten anything until all the bolts are in. So we can see that this is still loose. So let's go ahead and tilt this over. And you guys can see there's a couple holes here. And we're gonna run the large ones through the bottom up. So you might have to kind of move it around a bit to catch the threads. But again, not very hard at all. And this printer's pretty small, so it's quite easy to just move it around and get it to where you need it. So I'm going to snug this up reasonably well. And then I'm going to go back to the top and tighten these. Now I'm going to turn the wrench this way so I can have leverage. And you don't want to go crazy, just, you know, reasonably tight. And then I'm going to go to the bottom again and really tighten them up good. Again, nothing crazy, just, you know, whenever you start feeling some decent resistance, that should be plenty. And that's how it connects. And this is actually a pretty good design because we got two bolts from the bottom and also two bolts here on the side, which gives the upper portion pretty good stability. All right, so let's see what's next on the steps. And that's going to be our spool holder. It installs here on the side. And there is one M540 bolt, which is this really long one. And so we're gonna grab the spool holder. And you guys can probably see there's like this molded piece with the brass threadings in on the bottom side. And this literally just sits right into there like that. And you're going to line up the hole there from the top and the bolt will go down. Grab the correct Allen wrench, kind of wiggle it around until it goes through and tightens into the threads. So here you don't want to be too tight, just a little bit, because if you make it too tight, this won't swivel. So just when it starts to grab somewhat, that should be good. And this is a really nice design as it can fold away to the side or unfold when you need to use it, which is really nice for the small form factor. And we already installed the spool holder part, which really easily comes off and goes on either side, but it is meant to go towards the back like that as our filament feeds up here to the extruder. All right, and so our last part that we need to install is the handle here on top, which is this guy here. And we're gonna need the last two bolts, which are the M514. And I'm gonna set this kind of on the side so you guys can see a little better. But the handle literally just goes like this, right on top. So this opening here is for the lead screw, and then the two bolts can go through the handle here into the channel. So yeah, everything is quite intuitive and easy to figure out. And our wrench can go here through the top because there's a couple holes and you can reach the bolt like that. And there we go, very nice. So for the next part, they want us to plug in all of the wiring here on the back side. And there are quite a few wires coming and going all around the printer and they are all labeled. Like this one here says Z and Z also, and one of them's larger and the other one's smaller. The larger one's gonna go to the motor and the smaller one's gonna go to the end stop switch. So let's go ahead and plug in the Z motor and then the Z end stop switch right here and going up higher here you guys can see all these wires and this is going to be for the extruder and the x-axis so the extruder one is going to say e on it and that's this motor here let's go ahead and bring this down a bit i'm just spinning the coupler here so we'll plug in the e into the extruder all right now we got two more and these are going to say x again a smaller one and larger one the larger one's going to go to the motor which is right here and it plugs from underneath and the smaller X is the end stop switch, which is inside of this little enclosure here. It's a little hard to get to, but the opening here is large enough where you can fit your finger in. 
And so that's our X and stop switch. Now on the manual here, they also remind you that you need to check your power supply voltage. And that's going to be on the very back. You guys can see that switch right there. And so mine is set on 230 right now and we need to switch that to 115. So depending on where you live, you can adjust it to your voltage. And that's what this little flat screwdriver is for. I'm just gonna click that to 115 and we should be good. So yeah, make sure you check that before you try to power on the printer. And so for the next part, we're gonna be installing the screen, which we need to plug it in, and then it clips on here on the side, and we can see the wiring right here coming out, and it's taped to the base. Got a little bit of residue, and if you do this with the tape, it picks it up quite easy. So this is quite simple to install. We're just gonna plug it in on the back side, and then there's a couple little grooves here that these nubs go into, kinda of like that, and then it slides down. And that's it. Pretty simple installation, guys. And not very hard at all. And even though we got everything installed, there's actually a few things that we need to look at and adjust before we can even start printing. And one of those things are going to be the rollers, which we need to check and adjust if needed. And also the belts, which we do have tensioners to make sure everything is running smooth and true. So you will need this wrench for adjusting the rollers. And we'll start with the bottom, which is gonna be the bed here. So there's a couple rollers, two on this side and two on the other, and that's what goes around the channel. And if you guys saw that when I moved it, the screen lit up, so be careful not to move this too fast, as it does have a back voltage where if you do it too fast, it could burn out the electronics. But what we're trying to do here is basically just check, make sure these rollers are tight around the channel. So if we stick our hand under there, we can see if the roller does a little burnout, so I'm just kind of moving it in one spot. And you guys probably can't see this very well, but our back one is very loose and just spins and the front one is practically perfect. It does a burnout in one spot so I can basically move the wheel while the bed's not moving. That just tells you that it's loose enough but not too loose where the bed will wobble. So, And the citric nuts are on this side which are pretty easy to get to. So I'm going to just tighten up the back one a little bit and that should be good right there. So yeah, the whole point is, is you're trying to make the wheels where they're not too tight around the channel and not too loose where the bed will wobble. So somewhere in between where it's barely tight and that's perfect and you can kind of run it and tell if it's nice and smooth. And also check your belt. So ours is pretty good, maybe a little tighter than I would like, but honestly it'll probably wear in. So yeah, you can adjust the belt here on the front with this knob. And we can't really see if the belts are aligned on the pulleys because everything is covered up on the front, but on the back you can see it here through this opening. So And ours looks pretty good. Now, if you did need to kind of adjust this, it might get a little more complicated, but it is possible as there's some screws here and you know, you can try to bend it around somewhat. But hopefully yours is pretty well aligned from the factory, like mine is. And now we can go to the top. We have the hot end here with the same kind of rollers and mine here is adjusted perfectly, which is great. So I can spin my wheels quite easy and it feels pretty smooth. It might be slightly tighter than I would like, but it's definitely acceptable. And again, also the belt is definitely too tight. Yeah, so I'm gonna loosen that and that feels a lot better. So on the belt, you just want it to be slightly tight. You don't want it to be over tightened because if you're gonna be over tightened, it's going to overstress all of the components and plus put vibration into the print. So you just want it slightly tight. And when you roll this thing back and forth, it should be very smooth without any kind of jittering or anything funny. If you feel anything, you know, adjust your rollers and make sure your belt is happy and not too tight. And again, on one of the sides here, we can see the belt there on the pulley and it's running pretty good. So overall, everything is decently adjusted here on mine. I think I'm going to loosen up this just a little bit because I like mine a little looser than tighter, especially for a pretty light hot end like this. And yeah, that feels really good. And also guys, you wanna check these rollers here on the X axis and there's two on the outside and one on the inside where it does have the centric nut and you can adjust it. On this, it's the same kind of thing, but this one you do want it to be a little bit tighter than looser because our whole X axis here hangs free air just holding on these rollers. So yeah, mine are adjusted again really well and I don't have to do anything. But yeah, you just wanna have a pretty decent amount of drag on these wheels where they're reasonably tight. Because this doesn't go up and down so much, it's okay to be a little tighter than looser, especially for this design. Hopefully that made sense guys and as simple as that, we're adjusted and everything feels really good.